Hello and welcome back to Mastering Data Visualization with D3.js. In today's video, the first of our final section, we're going to begin by applying all of the information we've learned so far to start building an interactive stock market dashboard to visualize real-time data pulled from a web API. In this section, we're going to see how to attach D3 to real-world APIs to display current historical stock data, how to lay out a dashboard to visualize multiple pieces of information all at once, how to build reusable plot components for cleaner, easier, and more reliable code, and finally, how to add interactivity that allows us to affect the entire dashboard at once. In today's video, we're going to be looking at the simple components that we're going to use to build our dashboard. In this video, we're going to see how to get stock data using D3, pulling from the IEX API. We're going to load that data into our browser. And then finally, we're going to use D3 to plot that data as a time series. Now, this is going to build us a dashboard that is probably not going to compete with the Bloomberg terminals, but will allow you to visualize some important information and look at correlations between different stocks. And this is a really important kind of data visualization where you're looking at more than one piece of information all together at once in a way that connects those pieces of information. And as we'll see in the final video, we'll add some abilities to interact in a way that lets us look at the different ways in which data from different data sets are correlated with each other. We're going to be using the API from IEX Trading. This is an alternative stock exchange to standard NASDAQ or Fortune type stock exchange you might be used to thinking of when you think about stocks. And the reason we're using this is because most of the major stock exchanges have very, very significant license fees for their API. So IEX has all of the major companies that you might be interested in, aside from some more niche ones, and it provides a very well-documented, complete, and free API. Let's dive in now by looking at our code. So we have to begin a function here that uses an asynchronous JSON fetch from D3 to grab data. Let's take a look first at what this data looks like. So here you can see the results of fetching this chart API call. So this is a standard RESTful API. It provides JSON data. And you can see it returns a big array. And this array is our time series points. Each of these points gives us a date, when that time, what that date corresponds to. So this is a per day data set. It gives us the closing value, the maximum, the minimum, and the opening value of that stock, as well as the unadjusted volume, the volume, and some other kind of metadata on top of that. So we can actually use this to plot how this stock changes over time. So we can call this function here, plot stock. And you can see I've written a fairly simple set of D3 commands here that will parse in that time build a time-based axis, simple linear axis for the, for the Y value, and then build axis labels, apply them on each. And finally, it will use the D3.line to generate a path for the low of the stock, which we'll show in red, the high of the stock, which we'll show in blue, and of course, the closing of the stock, which we're going to show here in black. So if we call this, let's say, let's call it for Apple, see what Apple stock's doing like. You can see we render this nice time series plot here. And you can see, of course, the closing is bounded by the low on the bottom and the high above that. So these three curves together show not only the evolution of the stock's value over time, but also the spread within a single data point, how much it varies within a single day. 